If you collected baseball cards in the 80s or 90s, Dick Perez is a name you are very familiar with. His artwork was the basis for the Donruss Diamond King subsets, the Hall of Fame hero set, the Donruss puzzles, and later in a variety of top sets. His portraits grace the halls of the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. And Mark Evans is an award-winning independent filmmaker from Washington State, and along with his wife and son, they together create film, books, photography, and other creative works and he's currently working on a documentary about Mr. Perez. Both of you, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having us. Mark, what sparked the idea to do a project highlighting Dick and the contributions he's made to baseball and sports as a whole? Yeah, this all started, I think it was June of last year. Um, my son, who's 12, uh, he probably had just turned 12 at the time, uh, really fell in love with baseball last year. And I credit Julio Rodriguez for that, you know, rookie last year for the Mariners. He just, my son fell in love with him and we were going to a ton of Mariners games. And of course, you know, if he's going to start getting into baseball, baseball cards followed very quickly. And I kind of started dabbling back into collecting during COVID in 2020, which I know, you know, a lot of people did. And, um, and my son was interested in the cards, but it wasn't, you know, until he really felt, fell hard for baseball, um, it, it was just kind of, it was just kind of a passing interest. But then once he, once he really got into it, we were going back through all my cards and um, both of us, when we were going back through a lot of my cards, it was the diamond Kings that we were really interested in. Um, I collected heavily from like 1987 to 94, probably. So that's kind of, you know, the bulk of my cards. And I always had them organized in binders by player that I collected. And um so, you know, he started asking about these Diamond Kings and I didn't really know, you know, much of the story beyond I just loved those as a kid. And uh, so I remember the day I, I, I was like, Dick Perez, what's what is this? What is the story of Dick Perez? And I Googled him, came across his website. And what I didn't realize um, at that point was just the fact that he painted the entire history of the game, it, you know, his work goes beyond just the, the, you know, diamond Kings, just baseball cards. And I was really blown away with the art that I was seeing. And, um, and then reading his bio on, on his website, uh, his background coming from Puerto Rico at a very young age. Uh, I thought that this could be an interesting story to make into a film. And, um, and, and so that was like the initial seed of the idea. And, and, you know, I found an email address for Dick reached out. Um, I think he responded pretty quickly was, and said, Hey, yeah, we should talk. And, um, and that, and that was the beginning. We just kept it really casual. I mean, I, I was, I was going to be out in New York where Dick lives in August um, last year. And I thought, well, why don't I stay a couple extra days and I'll bring the camera and we'll, we'll shoot a little bit and just see how it goes. And it's been a great process. And um, you know, we've had a lot of fun together making this movie. That's, that's awesome. You know, Dick, while art has been a foundation of baseball cards from the 50s to the earliest pre-war cards, for many fans like me who grew up in the 80s, your Diamond Kings and Hall of Fame Heroes cards were some of our first exposure to card art. How did you first get connected to Donruss? Well, Donruss uh, got their license. Uh, they were a company that did cards, but they were Elvis cards, uh, golf cards, and no baseball. They knew nothing about baseball. I think they were owned by someone in Europe, the, the parent company. And um, they, they wanted to, to, to do baseball, but they, they, didn't, uh, they didn't have a, a clue as to the way the, the, you know, the, the, what the marketing of, of them needed. And especially when you now have three or four new companies going out there. They had uh, reached out to uh, Bill Madden, who's a, a sports writer for the New York Daily News, and he's in the Hall of Fame, in fact, uh, in the in that you know that uh, special section that they have. And uh, they wanted him to write the backs. I mean, the, and and he did, and he he had collected the. The, the, the Perez Steel art postcards. So he was aware of already of Frank Steele and me. And um, in a session that they were talking about marketing, they wanted to, uh, Don Russ wanted to know how would they separate themselves from the rest of the pack. 
And uh, he told them, he said, you should talk to Dick Perez and Frank Steele. Maybe they have some ideas. They, they do cards. They actually do art cards. So they did. They contacted us. They came out to Pennsylvania, the Philadelphia area, and uh, began from there. Um, what it, I mean, I, I guess, and I don't remember exactly, but I think uh, Frank and I had decided that obviously we were going to bring art back to baseball cards because the last time that that happened was in the early 50s. And, uh, you know, the rosters got unbelievably big for that kind of uh, endeavor mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, for painting them. So um, we decided that he you know, engineered the, the, the format in that it would be a representative of each team, which meant a, a set of 28 cards or whatever, you know, the team number was when they, when they added any. Um, and uh, we presented them to the idea. They, they, they had no reason to evaluate the idea because they had no, you know, they didn't know what. So they went with it. And the greatest thing that I think happened with me was that they had, they didn't interfere with me at all. They didn't say, I want the, this or we want the, these cards for you to pay. I used to get tons of pictures of the same player from them. And I would choose or put them together or whatever so that they were a lot of my imaging than, than the photographers. Um, so, and as I got along, I started getting more adventurous as I was maturing in, in my, in my skill. And uh, I started doing colorful representation, things that aren't realistic, so to speak, but you knew it was a face. You knew that, that they were tonal values and they they look like skin tones, but they weren't. They might have been a bright yellow and a red or uh, colors like that. And just that, cause I, I really felt that much of the audience was young and these are the kind of things that they, it would appeal to them. Now I never, ever did I get anything. First of all, I never got any, any monitoring from Don Ross and I never got, one single piece of fan mail about they liked the cards from anybody who collected cards the whole time that I did them. It was only after these kids grew up and emails came into the picture and, you know, and I, uh, I get at the time my fan mail was about Perez Steele and the, and the stuff that we did while, while Frank was still alive and we were doing Perez Steele cards. Those, but overwhelmingly now when I get, my fan mail, it's it's uh, 20 to 1 or more than that, Diamond Kings. That was what really, I knew that that would have a national impact because even though the cards were, were the, the, the Perez Steel cards were um, uh, also a national item, yeah. but they were not players that young people and young collectors were that familiar with. It was, you know, it, it was the Johnny Benches and, and those, those, those people who would, the, the 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 fans and collectors knew so we had the opportunity to make art of these people and uh it just it just lasted it, it got it lasted for about 15 15 years and then uh we just i forget why we bowed out i guess we were, we were trying to you know do others i was trying to do other things and uh they continued Diamond Kings, but I think they used different artists and they were all basically what I try to avoid, which is strict pose headshots, mm -hmm. smiles, and what have you. I mean, that to me doesn't, you know, it's not, it's, it's a good revenue, a good skill, skill and craft, but it, it, it wasn't bringing anything that somebody hadn't seen. When you create art, you want to show something that they, somebody has never seen before, but this is the first time they're encountering Chili Davis done this way. You know, it's not a photograph, and you know it's not a photograph. Um, so, uh, I guess, I guess I, I just continue with the uh, with the Phillies because I was very involved with them in their marketing and, and, uh, and not only their their uh, you know their publications and what have you. And um, and then I started working on my book, which was a big project. I mean, the book is like over five hundred pages. It weighs ten pounds. And there was a lot of art to do. I, I spent a lot of time doing art just for that book. And that really took over my, my, my life for, for a couple of years, two or three years.
As you were working through those different Diamond Kings projects year over year, you said Donruss was pretty hands off. How much freedom did you have in choosing the subjects each year? Well, all of it. I mean, Frank and I, Frank did a lot of the, you know, he said, well, how about this guy? And then we started talking about him. And, and then we were making that judgment the year before they would appear. Because I had to be working on it during the, the year and the winter that the baseball had gone away so that they'd be ready for the opening of the season. And usually we called it right. There might have been one or two players that were replaced near the end because we they bombed, you know, they started high and then they they fizzled out. But basically we 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 first of all each team had uh, a star. And many times those stars are going to be performing or having a great year. There are a couple of Diamond Kings that appear more than once. But we try not to do that. Like when we try to, you know, expand the the images, and and the number of players, the kind of different players. So um, it, we just chose. We just we did it. They they didn't know anything. They they you know they were they didn't know who who Johnny Bench was, you know, or what. And so, but we did. And and uh, and Frank was a real student of 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 baseball. I mean, he was a collector himself. So it became a uh, uh, a hands you know hands off free whatever Diamond Kings were Frank and me, you know that's that was it. Very cool. I've talked to some creators who tell me that when they begin to create their work, they kind of do so with a goal of creating something that will maybe evoke a particular emotion or idea. Um, I guess. You know, there's others who purely create something to share their own perspective. And so I was wondering, like, as you sat down to paint these these projects, was there anything in particular that you envisioned about the ultimate collector who would eventually be holding that card? Well, I mean, I, I would have to expand that to any piece of art that I do, whether it were for, for the book, for prints, for whatever. I've always wanted my work to have a narrative in it, you know, something that said something about the sport. Or about the 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 the, the time that that uh, the the painting, the era that that, that the painting represented, uh, for example, uh, and it's subtle. Some of it is subtle. I mean, I would have a, have to do a painting of Eddie Collins, who was on the team during the uh, the scandal, the the Black Sox scandal, and uh, he was on that team, but he didn't he didn't participate in any of the of the of the bad stuff. I mean, he was an honest, honest guy, you know. So I, I always felt good about that. That there was a player who had, you know, integrity like that. So when I did a painting of him, I did a painting, and of course, when when all this stuff broke out, there were big signs in the stadium that said no betting. I mean, huge signs. They didn't want any gambling in the in the. In the that was a big no no, and that's how Pete Rose got into trouble. Because they still they're very hard on, on people who mm -hmm. bet on games, so I had I posed I mean I, I invented the shot and I, I got one of these big signs behind him as he stood at second base and there's no betting behind him you know or things like that along with all the, the signage that of products of that era and so there was always something I wanted to to, to convey like that in a portrait. Uh, you know, it's it, it's it's just the technique that I wanted to sep separate it from other things and definitely create something that's not a photograph. <laughs> How did you develop such a deep connection to baseball? Kind of what's the origin of, of you connecting to baseball? I find that it was the gateway to America for me. I mean, when I came to this country, I was six years old and... Um, and didn't speak a word of English, but everybody played baseball, including Puerto Ricans who spoke Spanish too. And of course I was raised in, I was spending my youth in Harlem. So there was a lot of street playing and diverse uh, cultures. So uh, everybody, every, it was a big thing. And of course, thus it was an era, I was fortunate to be thrown into the United States in an era with three teams who, who were winners, basically, for the, you know, the time I followed them, the Giants, the Dodgers, and the Yankees. Uh, so baseball was huge in New York. 
And through that, I got made, I made friends. I'm sure it contributed to my learning to speak English. And, uh, and to a point where I said, uh, I think this is what I'm going to do in my life. I'm going to play baseball. I, 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 I thought it was just another, it's like being an engineer. You decide to be an engineer, you just be an engineer. I thought you can do that with baseball. If you play, then, you know, uh, when you, if you're really good, you're going to be a Mickey Mantle as opposed to some player who, who's still a major leaguer, but he's not as good as Mickey Mantle. I think I'll be one of those. I'm not going to be a Mickey Mantle, but, uh, you know, I play it. I, and, and I wasn't a, a good hitter. I was a terrible hitter, but I was a good fielder, and I was left-handed, so I was limited to the positions that any major league team <laughs> would hire me for. So, uh, so it became a big part of my life. It was a huge part of my life. Uh, and a lot of it is because I played it, and my friends were all in, and with the neighborhoods that we had a team, I won a, we won a championship in one of those youth leagues. I got, I still got the jacket. The, you know, Marcus seen it. You, you'll see footage in the film. Dick can still fit into that jacket. And I, yeah, and I, I, I can still fit into the jacket. So, uh, so yeah, I, it just became a huge. Uh, now, uh, you know, over the years that has waned somewhat because I took up tennis, so I follow tennis intensely. Um, I like basketball and like football, but football was not a big New York thing. I mean, a lot of high schools, the public high schools didn't have football teams, so to speak. Basketball, yes, but I, I didn't have the skills. I didn't have the hands, the big hands. I didn't have height. I didn't have speed. I didn't have any of that to be a basketball player. So, you know, baseball was it. So, um, you know, it, it, it was, uh, uh, I guess when, when, and then I drew, although I never put the two together, you know, I always drew as margins on my card. I would do, I would drew my class, I would make caricatures of my classmates and, and uh, little baseball things or airplane, whatever you, you do around the notebook of your card. I mean, the edges of your notebook. Uh, so I always drew, but I never really put them together. I didn't say, okay, well, I'm not good enough to be a baseball player, but maybe I'll paint them. I'll paint baseball. That didn't come as a decision that came as an opportunity later on in my in my career. Mark, you reference a quote from Jacques Barzin that says, whoever wants to know the heart and mind of America had better learn baseball. Why is that so meaningful to you? Uh, I think it's meaningful, uh, certainly when talking about Nick's story, because, um, you know, as he just mentioned, that's how he re- that was his gateway to America as, as a six year old coming by himself to this country, you know, put on a plane after losing his father and his mom puts him on a plane, hoping, you know, for a better life for him and for the family. And that is how he learned about America was through baseball. So I think when I, when I saw that quote, um, which I think is a pretty famous quote, I wasn't familiar with it before, before I saw it, I just thought that's a great uh, representation for this film. And, um, and, and somebody, one of the people that I've interviewed for the film was John Thorne, um, you know, historic official historian of Major League Baseball, and I talked to him about that quote, and um, and I think his comment was that it's still he believes it's still true today, and it's even more true today than it ever has been, and that uh, America sure could look to baseball right now to help uh, solve some of its problems. So um, I thought it was you know something that was true way back when when Dick was a young boy coming to this country, and and still relevant today. Where did your connection to baseball come from? just at a very young age, loving baseball. Um, you know, it was the thing that I did it, every day, you know, I'd kindergarten come home from school and I was out in the backyard just playing, you know, nine inning games by myself. And, um, yeah, just loved baseball, loved collecting. Um, you know, I, I also thought that maybe, you know, that would be something that I would end up doing. I just played through high school. Um, good, good high school pitcher, um, not, not good enough to, you know, had college opportunities, but not good enough to really, you know, continue on a pro career or anything, but, um, always been a big baseball fan, but I, but not as serious, uh, probably through, you know, through like the, you know, after college for 10, 15 years and really the last several years, again, I've just totally fallen back in love with the sport. Um, it helps, you know, if you're a Mariners fan, it helps when they're good, which, you know, we, we seem you know, to be on the right path. So uh, that and then in combination with finding this project, it's just it's been really fun to get back into baseball being such an important part of my life. With this project, you're using one form of art to highlight another form of art. And not only are you telling the story of Dick's life, but you're using his works to help do so. 
But that's not all. You're using both of those things to help tell the overall story of baseball. What can you tell me about trying to blend all of those aspects together in one project? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how well it works at some point, because right now my process is um, I have 90 percent probably captured of of uh, Dick's story, what we want to do for the 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 biography of Dick Perez. And that's through, um, you know, many, many hours of interviews with Dick on camera, um, his collection of archival material that, you know, television shows that he's gone on over the past, you know, what, 40 plus years. Um, and then most importantly, his whole collection of paintings, which we are bringing to life with, you know, we want to make these animations that we're doing subtle. We don't want it to take away from the paintings. We want it to, uh, you know, add to it, hopefully. So, but it is pretty cool. Some of these, you know, early tests that we've done bringing Dick's paintings to life. So that's one side of what the idea of this film is, but there's another side of telling uh, a version, I guess, our version of the history of baseball going back to the 1800s um, to today, because Dick, you know, has, has painted that whole history, including up till today, you know, painting uh, what most recently Shohei Otani, Julio Rodriguez paintings. Um, and so uh, I probably can't say the name yet of the actor, but we have an actor, a well-known actor that's going to be um, acting as an on-camera narrator. He's going to kind of be like the voice of baseball. And so this segment will be set to Dick's work and it'll be the whole, you know, our version of the history of baseball. And that'll be intercut weaved in through the biography of Dick. So um, it's really, you know, there's a lot of layers to the story and I think it's, it's, you know, probably pretty ambitious, but um, I'm super excited to see that come together. And uh, ju just, you know, again, the biography of Dick, what we've been editing this work in progress that we have um, has been awesome. And again, seeing his, seeing his work come to life has been really, really fun. Uh, you know, su somebody such a big fan of his work, uh, to be able to work with those paintings and have them as, uh, you know, material is kind of a dream. You mentioned that you're the vast majority of the way through the project. Um, but I believe there's a Kickstarter campaign that launched this week at the, at the time of release of this episode to help fund the finishing touches on the film. Tell me a little bit about this Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, so uh, basically, you know, this has been kind of a passion project for me and a small team, and um, you know, it's more or less just been self-funded, and we're 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 getting close. We're getting close to finishing all the production that we need, but there's still some production that's left. Um, there, there, there's a handful of shoots that we want to do that I think are really going to elevate the film to the next level. And then there's a little bit of post-production uh, costs that are going to go into it as well, with um, some licensing, uh, music. Some, some additional editing, things like that in order to get it completed so we can put it out there into the world. So we launched this campaign and uh, to, to help. And it's, um, you know, we're really excited about it because a lot of the rewards are uh, really great. And the one I'm most excited for is there's a brand new Dick Perez baseball card set. Uh, 13 card set includes, you know, I'll let Dick talk about that as well too, but new paintings of Babe Ruth, um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, Julio Rodriguez is part of the set, Shohei Otani, um, and then a lot of the players that Dick has a connection with either growing up with or having, uh, you know, a friendship with or somebody that he's worked with, like Mike Schmidt, um, Ichiro Suzuki, uh, Mickey Mantle, of course, Roberto Clemente. So brand, brand new set of cards that, uh, that Dick is, has, has designed and, and painted. Dick, was that, uh, did that idea for that set or kind of a, a, a new Dick Perez card set, did that come as a result of this project or was that something that you had been kind of bouncing around in your mind before, uh, this project with Mark? No, that's the result of the project the, uh, to get, I mean, one of the one of the reasons that Perez Steel had a denouement it was because getting consent from players and the Hall of Fame and it got impossible, especially when agents became a big part of of a player's life. Uh, we couldn't we wouldn't be able to to, to do that today. We wouldn't we couldn't start. Uh, I mean, there were there were some players who were inducted, and then we we eventually uh, they would sign a paper a waiver. Along along with the contract that they sign with the Hall of Fame when they're inducted, where they say you may use my image for the promotion of the Hall of Fame, but there was a, a writer on that that said that addressed the baseball Hall of Fame art postcards. Well, there were a couple of players who didn't want to, gave, you know, Gaylord Perry was one who, you know, I mean, like you already, the agent told him no. 
eventually Frank was a very convincing guy and he, uh, he, he eventually signed on to it, but there were a couple of play like in the celebration set. If you're familiar with that, I, I don't know. It's, 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 I, that's one of my, my favorite sets that really, uh, there are a couple of players that are not in it. They just refuse to, to participate. So I wanted to do all the living hall of famers in a set of cards. And uh, we got 44 of them and there might've been 47 of them. So you're not, you're not found in that set of cards. So, so, it's the effort to do, you know, uh, the production and selling of it that you have to, you know, work to, to get it done. And, and that's something I'd rather just paint and whatever, and somebody uses them, great. Uh, but it was, it, yeah, the result, and I'm very, I'm very excited because I, I, there are players that, in the, one, the and I'm hoping for a little bigger set, maybe, <laughs> but, but, uh, uh, that I, that I, you know, my friends may, okay, Ted Williams was a friend, uh, and, and then people that Tom Seaver wrote the intro to my book. And so there was connection that way. And they're all Hall of Fame. They were Hall of Famers, except for a couple of them, which are destined, as we see them today, to be Hall of Famers and Julio and Rodriguez and, uh, and Otani. They're, they're, they're on the way to that. And, uh, the set is titled Diamond Immortals. Okay. But you got to be a Hall of Famer to be an immortal. You can't be an immortal. You can't, you, you'll die. You, you can't be an immortal if you're, if you're not a Hall of Famer. So, so we, we just, that banner that goes across the top of the, of the, of the card, like diamond, the word Diamond King, it says Diamond Destiny. And, and the, 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 the uh, people like uh, Tom Seaver is Diamond Immortals. So diamond is a big, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, we, we were originally going to name the car the diamond stars, but there was a 1930 set that, that was diamond stars. So Frank actually came up with the, you know, the, the, the word, the diamond king. Um, so that's too sad. And, and I liked it immediately. I thought that was, yeah, I mean, that's terrific. So, uh, and, yeah. and the, name, the name of this set, the Diamond Immortals, is playing off of obviously the Diamond Kings, and then also Dick's book is called The Immortals. Yeah. So kind of combining those right, right. parts of Dick's career, and then and then yeah, the, the three current players, Aaron Judge, Shohei Otani, Julio Rodriguez, are Diamond Destiny. Very, very Aaron nice. Judge. <laughs> yeah. When when I when I learned about the project, you know, Dick, your work was a foundational part of my collecting youth as a kid when I was learning baseball. And I was some of the first times I ever had a card with some of these Hall of Fame legends on it was was some of the cards that you produced. Um, when I found out that there was going to be this project, that was something that I was super excited about. And then when when Mark reached out um, and we had the opportunity to to connect today. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, it's, it's an honor to be able to talk both about the project and to get a chance to talk a little bit with, with you, Dick, about, about you and your work. So I really appreciate the, the time that you guys took. What else do you both want people to make sure our listeners know about the project? Dick, what do you think? <laughs> well, I think, I think you've worded it well. I mean, I think because of the work that is being represented, there is a historical spectrum there. Uh, and and the set of cards begins with Babe Ruth as card number one, which, and it goes up until uh, Rodriguez, who will be the last card or what? You know, because he's a rookie. So that that span of history is is in the play or in the player that or is in the player that that adorned the cards with their uniforms and you know. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just looking forward to the fact that, you know, we've been really doing this project pretty quietly behind the scenes. You know, we haven't um, up until the uh, publishing of this Kickstarter campaign, we haven't put anything publicly out there about it. And um, and as we kind of put a, a couple feelers out, uh, the response has been really great. So I'm excited for people, uh, you know, the collecting industry, baseball fans to, uh, you know, at large to hear about this and hopefully kind of, jo you know, join the team as we as we finish the film. And then ultimately, you know, sometime next year is the plan to, to put it out. And um, so I'm just really excited to, to share it with people, share it with other baseball fans and, and uh, card collectors. Where can people learn more if they want to connect with you or if they want to help spread the word? 
Uh, well, the best thing would be to share the campaign, you know, take a look at the rewards, see, it, uh, you know, if there's a reward level that you want to contribute and then um, and then share it with anybody that you think might be interested in some of those rewards and just following along and helping out this film to get finished. Um, eventually, we'll have a website for the film um, as well, too. But uh, but it, but people that that uh, join the Kickstarter campaign they will, like I said, be part of the entire process. So then once, once the, you know, all of the updates for the film along the way, they will be getting those updates as, as backers of the film. So that's really going to be the best place to kind of start following along now and uh, be a part of the project until it's released. Very cool. So if you want to be a part of this, I'll have the links to the Kickstarter in the show notes that you'll be able to click on, find that Kickstarter campaign and join at whatever level that, that you want to. Um, Mark, Dick, it's been an honor to have you on the show today. It really means a lot to me to, that you would spend a few minutes talking to me and talking to our audience. So thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Appreciate it. Being here.